I wanted to ride, I wanted to experience freedom on two wheels. So he took some pictures and then he was asking me, where are you staying this night? And I was like, actually I wanted to camp on the side of the river. And he was like, yeah, mm, I don't know, maybe you should come to my place, I can host you. And I was like looking across the streets, his friends were standing there and they were all men. And it was sometimes like the, the universe was watching over me because at the right time I always met the right people and they were there for me. So I was coming up on a mountain road like this and then I, I was asking myself, what the heck are you doing here? I mean, I had no network, no nothing, not that much experience and I was like, if I fall down, if I drop the bike, if I fall from the cliff, nobody's here to help me. How can you experience something like this to be hosted by a shepherd in the middle of the mountains? alone as a woman. In Iran, Ladakh was always number one on my bucket list. Since Nepal, I was like, I need to ride in Ladakh because it's like more adventure, more off-road. At the end, it's my life. Life is happening now and just manifest your dreams and turn them into reality. Okay, as I'm uh, pretty nervous, I'm going to start like uh, we Germans do. We just jump into the ice cold water and I will start with a video. And this video is uh, in Iran. So please play the Iran video. Good job. <laughs> Not so easy. No, no. <laughs> I'm just riding. No Farsi. No <laughs> Farsi. So, I can see a lot of question marks uh, because everybody thinks like, what was that? Um, I was in Iran, riding through a mountain road. Um, it was gravel, rocks, sandy ground, and it got quite difficult for me because I just started riding on uh, my 800 GS on this trip. So, I had to get used to riding off-road on a heavy bike. Um, but I couldn't resist to continue riding more into that mountains. I want to explore it a little bit more. So, um, but it was quite exhausting, so I dropped the bike. Um, right after that, this, this uh, she uh, shepherd, he came by and helped me to lift up the bike. We were not speaking the same language, so it was like body language. But he mentioned something with Chai and he pointed in the only direction I could go. So I just went there and I ended up in the, in the camp of the shepherds. Um, the sun was setting down and I was like in that moment so exhausted, drinking my chai, isolated with the strangers. Like they had, his two sons have been there. Um, they had their animals like sheep, goats, dogs, chickens, everything. And they just lived their life there on that remote mountain area. And um, I was sitting there drinking my chai and now I thought like, what I'm doing now? The sun is setting down, I don't have a place to sleep. Um, but yeah, this guy, the, the shepherd, my host, he was like smiling all the time. He had such a positive energy and he just cooked dinner and then he made a stew out of goat, uh, goat meat, their own goat meat and uh, potatoes. And he picked out the best parts for me and it served me first. And I was like, oh my God, he's so, so welcoming and hospitable. And then 
I was looking around. I was like, where do I pitch my tent now? Where I'm going to stay for this night? And then he was like, right here, because I just made the sign like, tent, where? And he was like, here, in front of our tent. There was a carpet. So I stayed there in the night. The next morning I woke up. He made uh, breakfast for me, like their own yogurt and milk. And I enjoyed breakfast. And uh, um, another shepherd came by. And they put out a scale just right in front of me. And I was like, okay, I have a clue what's going on next. So they took a really big old cheap, put it on the scale. And I was like, uh-huh, interesting. Put out my camera <laughs> because I knew what's happening next. Um, so they slaughtered a sheep right in front of me. And I was like, oh my God, how? How did I came into this situation? Um, but this experience is like priceless. I mean, how can you experience something like this to be hosted by a shepherd in the middle of the mountains, alone as a woman in Iran? And they were just like making their own business, not minding that I'm there. They served me, they, they took care of me. But for them, that was like a normal thing to do. And when I left this place, I was so grateful and happy that I could like, experience something like this. I mean, who can experience something like this? You will not experience this, this if you are like riding on a road and uh, just follow a route or a group. This, these things are like priceless, yeah. So that's why I wanted to start with that story, but now I'm going to tell you something about me, and um, I'm Claudia. I'm riding an 800 GS, and I started riding with 18. Um, my father was totally against it because he said it's too dangerous, I should not ride a motorcycle, blah, blah, blah. But um, as a teenager, I always, and I was always, um, sorry, I always enforced my will. So I wanted to ride. I wanted to experience freedom on two wheels. That was always like a passion. I don't know where it comes from because no one in my family or friends are riding. But I knew it's my thing. But luckily for my father, I didn't have a bike when I started, when I had a license. So my first bike I got in my early 20s. It was an old Suzuki 1991 500cc, and I started riding on that. But it was more an all-day bike. So um, I didn't have any friends who were riding with me. So I was riding solo, more like going to work, back and forth. So after a six-year break, I bought my Yamaha R6. Um, thanks to the persistence of a coworker of my, um, my restaurant where I worked, he was like, you need to ride. I heard you have a motorcycle license, you need to ride, you need to be part of our group. We need a female rider in our group. And um, this step, when I got my R6, it transformed my passion, like, it was immense. From that point on, I was riding every three minutes. So there was like no off day where I was not riding. And uh, in 2018, I started traveling in Southeast Asia, so I always took a flight to Southeast Asia, rented a bike, most of the time it were dirt bikes, which are light and uh, like easy handling, and I went uh, more and more off-road. So on my solo trips before I started this journey, I covered 12 countries, and uh, it was most Southeast Asia, Europe, and the US. And uh, now I'm on my 12th country right now, uh, that is India, and I'm going to continue to Indonesia or further on if I can earn some money somewhere on the road. <laughs> so yeah, that was my, uh, my R6 one. I would count it as my first real bike because uh, the Suzuki before was more like an all-day bike. So that was in Nepal. Nepal was for me um, one of my bucket list rides this time um, because I always wanted to connect with the energy of the mountains. I wanted to explore more remote places 
and I wanted to have the pure riding adventure. So every mud section, every river crossing, um, it became like a dance bef between fear and excitement. And I, I just love this kind of game. And um, so I was coming up on a mountain road like this. So, and it gets quite difficult sometimes. And I had no human in sight, like for hours. I didn't saw anyone. And then I, I was asking myself, what the heck are you doing here? I mean, I had no network, no nothing, not that much experience. And I was like, if I fall down, if I drop the bike, if I fall from the cliff, nobody's here to help me. But the will of the achievement was for me <laughs> that thing, you know. <laughs> I don't know how to explain. Um, it's like, and this experience um, was like for me this transformative experience in Nepal where I said, um, I want to have more. And this one changed everything. Like Nepal changed everything. So then I came back home, back to reality, back to my sa safety zone, back to my comfort zone. And um, but I had a strong will always to break out of this. So in uh, Germany, I worked for a train company. And um, in 2020, I started working as a tour guide for motorcycle tours. And that's uh, one picture of a tour. So I turned my passion into my job. Um, in the train company also, I was traveling. I was working with people. So that was always a thing for me, like people, traveling. Um, so it was always a part of my life. And, um, but I needed a change. So I moved from, uh, from Germany to Austria last year. And yeah, that's all my belongings. <laughs> so I sold everything. Everything fits in a small trailer. That's all I got. So it was just um, the first step towards change the first step, breaking out of the comfort zone and risk something. Yeah, sometimes you need to risk something. Even when it wasn't that far away from home. I'm in Germany and Austria, a neighbor country, so I moved just 400 kilometers away. It was still a big change for me. But I moved into the Alps. We have the best alpine roads. Um, it was a joy. I mean, hiking, motorcycling, mountain biking, um, all my hobbies I could, uh, I could do there. But still, it didn't fulfill me. It wasn't enough. I was seeking for more. Um, so it was time for me to, I mean, actually, I saved all my money to buy a new bike. I wanted to buy a BMW 1000XR. <laughs> But the more I thought about it to buy that bike, I was like, this doesn't make me really happy. When I thought about to travel with that money and buy a cheaper bike and explore the world, did make, that made me happy. So I started dreaming about it and then I started planning. So the decision was clear. The Himalayas are waiting for me. So, and I need to turn that dream into a reality. And of course, feeling the pulse of the adventure fr passing through my veins once more. So that was my biggest goal. So that was the village where I lived. I mean, it's awesome. It's beautiful. And you have all that beautiful mountain passes around, but not enough. <laughs> Can you play, please, the such pass video? So that was Ladakh, uh, not, not Ladakh, sorry, that was Sachpas. So the gateway to Ladakh. Um, so Ladakh was for me always, um, it was more than just a ride. It was for me, it was for me the journey that spans the globe. Um, it was breaking free 
from limits, crossing borders, connecting with people, and not, about, not only about writing. It's like discovering the culture, meeting the people. And Ladakh was just the beginning for me because Ladakh was always number one on my bucket, bucket list. Since Nepal, I was like, I need to ride in Ladakh because it's like more adventure, more off-road. And it's huge. I mean, you have everything. So exploring remote places was for me like a world beyond the ordinary. Uh, challenging mountain passes, high altitude, um, water crossings from sand to rocks, and all that breathtaking views that just left me amazed. So but the journey tested not only my, my abilities and my strength, um, but within these challenges, I always find the beauty of the landscape and the people. So it was for me the, living the simple life on the road and connecting to the nature that brought a sense of freedom which no luxury hotel can give you. It's like not possible. And um, that was on the way to Tsumoriri. So I faced, of course, um, difficult sections, but I'm not that good in sand. I prefer rocks. But anywhere I was, there were always people to help me out. Like within seconds, minutes, the people came and just helped me to lift up my bike. So I was never that worried, even when I was alone. Can you just play the Tsumoriri video? So I was camping at Tsumori on 4,000 meters, this magical mountain lake. There's like nothing around, but and no network, of course not. Um, but this inspiring views you have there on that mountain, the Milky Way above, shimmering stars, the fresh mountain air is like the reward for that challenging hike up to that mountain. So. Um, it's like living in a dream sometimes, and you really can't describe it. It's like, oh my God, I'm here right now. Like, I'm breathing in this air, and I have this view right in front of me. Unbelievable. But along the way, I met riders from different countries. Um, they turned my solo trip into a shared adventure. So some became riding companions for days and others they just invited me for meetups and I became part of biker communities and families around the world so that made my journey just even more enriching this picture happened in Iraq Kurdistan so I was standing there with my tripod taking some pictures and if you can see maybe on the left side the camera a guy came by and he asked me to take some pictures of me and I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> so he took some pictures and then he was asking me, where are you staying this night? And I was like, actually, I wanted to camp on the side of the river. And he was like, yeah, mm, I don't know. Maybe you should come to my place. I can host you. And I was like looking across the streets. His friends were standing there and they were all men. So I was kind of unsure. So I declined. And then he was like, yeah, but it's no problem, you come to my place, I will ask my mom, and I was like, ah, okay, he's living with his family. After asking some more questions about his siblings and his family, I said, yes, I come. So I stayed there for, for almost, yeah, five days, and that showed me the hospitality of the people, how they welcomed me. I, I mean, just random, we met on the bridge, he took pictures of me, he invited me to stay in his house. I was like, oh my God. And actually, to be honest, on this day, secretly, I was hoping to get hosted by a local. And it happened to me. And it's beautiful, beautiful. And of course, as he was a photographer, um, we made some nice pictures, so now you can play that Kurdistan video, please. And we have a nice short video he made it with his drone. Yeah, 
yeah, as I'm writing solo, I could never get pictures or videos like this. I don't have a drone, I have a GoPro, which is not working properly, sadly, and uh, only my, my phone to take some pictures and videos, so I'm really grateful for this. Not only the experience, I mean, the experience with the family was like the biggest goal on that, but uh, I mean, of course, a little bonus to have uh, edits like that is also nice. Um, but my true, hi my true highlight of the journey is the people. Like, they were like bright spots during my journey. I had tough times. And it was sometimes like the, the universe was watching over me because at the right time I always met the right people and they were there for me. And I was sitting there with the, with the people talking about their culture. I was talking about my culture and that's the way how we learn from each other. Um, there's no other way to learn from each other. You need to, like, dive into it. And I dive totally into it. Like, wearing a sari in, in uh, Agra, wearing the traditional... I, I don't remember the name of this Pakistani clothes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I like to dive into it. So, when I stayed in Agra, I uh, stayed with a family. That was the, the beautiful family that hosted me in Agra. Um, when I left this family, I had a bike breakdown, just 50 kilometers after Agra. So I had to return back. I came back at 12 in the night. The father, he welcomed me with welcome home, and the mother, she heated food up for me because I caught a cold. I was standing eight hours at the expressway and waiting for a flatbed to bring me back to Agra. Um, so it was these moments, they felt like family for me. They, they felt so responsible for me. These were like the brightest spots on my journey. And I'm so grateful for that. And the mother was quite funny because she, um, her daughter-in-law, she said to me, she has really good um, couple matching skills so she can find a husband for every woman. But... Then she looked at me and then she was like, hmm, but for you, I can't find a man. You are too adventurous. <laughs> um, can you play the Agra video, please? So yeah, that was my way to Agra. On the flatbed. Watching the sunset. And my plan was actually to see the sunset at the Taj Mahal. But that was my sunset on this day. So yeah, all these people I met, riders, I was riding with, with people along the way. Um, that was actually the left, the big one, the big picture at uh, the Outback Festival in Leila Dag. That's actually the reason why I'm here, because the people I met, they all said come to IBW. The reason also is that I had a break breakdown, so everything happens for a reason. And uh, actually I would have been now in Thailand already. But I'm here, and I'm speaking here, so I think that's the biggest goal. And so all these families I stayed, they hosted me, they, they, I was like, they treated me as the most important member of the family. This connection I, I received with the people is, yeah, I can't, I really can't describe it with words. Um, when I was in Pakistan, so this is, this is not Pakistan, but this is just because at this moment I was in Pakistan riding on a very, very steep road going up with rocks. And it was like I was swimming with a with bike through it and it was quite challenging for me. So I was just pressing my hands on the handlebar, like staying with a throttle and just went through it. And I was like, there was no way to turn around. So I was like, I need to push myself going through this. And um, yeah, I mean, in this moment, I didn't overthink it. I was like, I just need to go through it. But afterwards, you, you think about it and then you think, how did I manage that? How did that work? I never made something like this, but you just press yourself through this and then you like, wow. So that's the moment um, I live for. <laughs> so. Yeah, I learned things like fixing my bike, uh, working on my bike. I mean, I, I, I made it before already that I like, 
practiced a little bit before I started my journey. But on the road, there are like things you cannot practice before because you never know which part is going to break down the next or damage. And so I had, of course, also like moments where I felt emotionally down. And uh, I was like, what are you doing here? But you also live your lo uh, miss your loved ones. I mean, I have nephews, I have sisters, family at home want to see me. But for me, it was, it's also part of the experience. It's part of the journey. And at the end, it's my life. It's my life. And this makes me stronger. And this brings me to my personal goal. And at the end, you will reflect on your journey. And then you will only think about the goals you have achieved, the beautiful, breathtaking nature you soaked in, the people you have met and hosted you and treated you as a family member, and how you stepped out of your comfort zone and risked something to live your life to the fullest. Because, I mean, life is happening now. And just manifest your dreams and turn them into reality. And that's the point. That's the reason why I made this. And there are things I made on this trip where I could never have had imagined before that. So, but I made it <laughs> somehow. <laughs> so, I mean, all in all, just ride more, step out of your comfort zone and risk something sometimes. It doesn't need to be a world ride, but it can be a s small ride in an area you don't know the culture you don't know, and then you will have the best experience. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you, Claudia. We have a few minutes for questions. We can take two questions only uh, because we're running out of time. So anyone would like to ask a question? Okay, I've got one for you. Okay. Traveling overseas, overlanding, is perceived to be a rich man's hobby, is it? No, it's not is for the rich. Is, okay, so tell me more about it. I mean, I have saved my money for almost two years. I work like in a restaurant and part-time as a tour guide, which is both are not paid like pretty well. And um, I was not spending that much because I was working on my goal. And if you really want to continue, then you can earn some money on the road also. Or you can save money by sleeping in a tent, like living really the simplest life you can have. Like sleeping in a tent, cook your own food, don't spend that much. I mean, there are so many things, they are for free, <laughs> what you can do on the road. The most, the biggest expense is like my bike, gas and my bike, but not myself. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, one more question, anyone? Okay, Lisa. Claudia, Claudia, thank you. Now, were there any points on your journey where you went, why am I doing this? Why the hell am I doing this? And what made you continue? What made me continue? Maybe that I'm kind of crazy sometimes. <laughs> and um, I just love to push myself through things I haven't experienced in my life before. I love the challenge. And um, through my experience, I have learned that the best things always happen when I push myself through things like this. Yeah. Thank you so much, Claudia. Welcome. And thank you for thank being you. here. And all of you, thank you so much for being part of these sessions. Thank it you so much. It wouldn't be possible without all of you here. Thank you. We have a small memento. Uh, a token of appreciation from Gulf.